garlic is a very potent antibiotic. In fact, the research is showing is six times more powerful than tetracycline, and that's a common antibiotic. To use it as an antibiotic, you would need probably about three of those a day. Now, if someone says, my gut couldn't handle three of those a day, what you can do is you can get a bowl of hot soup, grate it into the soup, and that'll just take the edge off it if a person cannot handle it raw. Or something delicious to put into your baked potato is to grate this straight into, say on this very fine, on the fine grater, grate it straight into olive oil and then spoon that mix into your baked potato. Very, very nice. And some people choose to do the antibiotic sandwich, which is a slice of sourdough spelt toast. Uh, olive oil on that and then grate this whole clove of garlic onto the slice and then avocado and tomato. It is very delicious. It's almost like a little mini pizza, isn't it? And what happens is the bread underneath and the olive oil underneath and then on top you've got the avocado and tomato. It calms it down a little bit. But I'm going to give you the recipe for the flu bomb or you can take the flu bomb. So the flu bomb can be used for bronchitis, it can be used for asthma, it can be used for the flu, it can be used for pleurisy, it can be used for pneumonia, it can be used for sinus or a head cold. The first ingredient is garlic and the garlic is crushed. I'm not putting an amount on there because some people can handle that much garlic. Some people can only handle half that garlic. So it depends what you can handle. The next ingredient is ginger. And the ginger is usually, well, it can be finely grated. And usually the ginger is about a quarter of a teaspoon. The next ingredient is eucalyptus oil. If you don't have eucalyptus oil, you can use tea tree oil. And it's one drop. Next ingredient is cayenne pepper. Now some people can handle half a teaspoon, some people can handle a quarter of a teaspoon, some people can only handle a little shake. So that's up to you too. The next ingredient is lemon. If the lemons are on the tree, I say use the juice of a lemon. If they're a dollar a lemon, maybe you use half a, half a lemon. But basically lemon juice you're using. And the last ingredient is honey, and usually it's approximately one teaspoon. Even if you put in four teaspoons, it does not really um, mask the other ingredients. <laughs> and then you mix that in about a third of a cup of hot water. Now, if someone has a flu or a cold or a sinus, it's usually taking one of those three times a day. So that's the flu bomb. Usually by the third day, you don't need it anymore. <laughs> that's quick, isn't it? It's quite potent, but it works. What about a baby? You can't give that to a baby. And as you saw, as you saw in my lecture uh, last night, you also can't give a baby food. So what can you do? You can finely slice garlic and you can wrap it on the bottom of the baby's foot. Now this is a very large piece of garlic. So maybe with a piece of garlic that big, you only need one. And what I would do to my babies, I'd get a little piece of cloth like this and I would put the garlic on the cloth and then wrap the cloth over it and then bind that to the bottom of their feet and then put their little sock or little shoe or booty on that. If you put a layer of cloth between the baby's skin and the garlic, it will not blister. But if you don't, you will form a big blister on the bottom of the baby's foot and the problem then is you can't put any more garlic on till the, till the blister heals. One lady heard about garlic on the bottom of the foot and she grated it up put on the baby's foot. Oh, she said, yes, I have a great big blister on the baby's foot now. 
But if you slice it like that, little by little, the garlic eases in through the pores on the bottom of the feet. And the garlic knows where to go. It'll go to the chest or it'll go to the, to the, the sinus areas and it can bring relief. It can even help to break up congestion in the chest. So my son James, when he was a little boy, he used to get a lot of chest colds. And I would put this on the bottom of his feet. He's about two and three. And I'd put a sock on and I'd shoe on and I'd send him off to play. And every step he's taking, what's happening? <laughs> the garlic's going into his body. You can smell the garlic on their breath within a few minutes. At the end of the day, when I'd take James' shoes and socks off and I'd undo the bandage, the garlic looked like a bit of dried out piece of yellow leather. No juice left. It's all, it's all gone in to James. Now, at the same time, one has to investigate why is my child getting so many chest colds? Well, we backed onto a swamp. And when James was four, we moved to a mountaintop and James no more had chest problems. So if a child's getting recurrent chest problems, you have to look and make sure there's no mold in the house. You have to make sure that you're in a clean, dry area, but also check that often children get chest colds and sinus and uh, tonsils and asthma because of dairy.